Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 72. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 125 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the bench just to talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So how is everybody doing this week? We had a great week. Even with all of the rain that we have gotten, we are on like 5.0 of the chicken coop. We have spent lots of time with our feathered friends and it has just been a nice relaxing week. I think once we got in our minds that you're gonna have to do stuff despite rain, yep. we stopped being stressed out about it and got this attitude of, well, we can do what we can do when we can do it. That's right. Now, before we go any further, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. Okay. The announcement that was just made by Keto Chow. And that is a new flavor. Not just any flavor. This is not like Birdie Bot's jelly beans. Are where, you gonna hold that? Where you could have like grass clippings or a vomit flavor. This is pistachio and it is amazing. You know, I'm pretty much a one trick pony. Y'all know when I get excited about something, it's like chocolate toffee, chocolate toffee, chocolate toffee. My playlist just doubled. Yeah, so we're really excited about this flavor. It is really good and you don't even know about this, but we do have a bunch of these. So you are giving them away. I'm gonna give some. I'm gonna give these away. No. So I actually have. No, 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 no. Yes. No. Okay. You I don't actually, want to give them away. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give away five of them. What? I have five, but we're gonna do five different people. So five different people. Let's I know it's not three. an expensive giveaway, but it's a giveaway. So what we're gonna do is, if you want to try the new pistachio flavor. No. Um, no I've, one sign up for this. <laughs> No one sign up for this giveaway. I want them all. <laughs> Can I finish? So uh, if you want to try the new flavor, leave a comment down below. Now, if you want to leave a comment and you don't want to try this, okay. just add into the comment, hey, I don't, you know, don't, don't enter me into the giveaway. All right, everybody. But now we know what to say. If you want to try it, hit the like button on this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Any comment will enter you. As a matter of fact, yeah, we, we're gonna do we're, we're gonna do six. We're gonna do six. We're gonna pick six different winners, and the winner is going to be picked on Thursday's live stream. So now you need to leave a comment down below, hit the like button on this video, no. make sure you subscribe to the channel, and then you need to watch the live stream on Thursday. And we're gonna pick the winner on Thursday and the winner will have 24 hours to respond. If we don't hear back- I'm drinking them. By Saturday morning- I'm eating them. I'm just gonna give it away to somebody else. No! <laughs> I don't wanna share this. Okay, so if you wanna try the new flavor- You don't. Like button. No. Subscribe. Uh-uh. Leave a comment. Watch the uh, no. live stream on Thursday and then uh, also, you have to live in the continental United States. So we're everybody really sorry about that, but from some other country entered this giveaway. It's all every other country giveaway. Rachel seriously didn't know I was giving this away, and neither do Chris and Miriam, but they sent me a bunch, so we're going to give them away. I am straight up ticked off right now. <laughs> now, I do want to say, if you didn't see their announcement, it is a limited edition flavor. It is only available right now in sample packs. Why are you giving them away? <laughs> and so it is a limited edition flavor. You can use the link down below. That link, if you click on through our link, you will get 10% off of your order, but you can only get 10% off when you click through our link. You mean and it's also tacked on top of the flavor of the week, which this week is mocha, which we finally tried it's mocha good. and it's really growing on me. Let's talk about some of the other deals that we have for the week. Um, if you like so high sweet. key, so high key um, is having a deal right now. It is a build your own breakfast bundle. Oh, how cute. Okay, so there's a link down below. Now, if you do use that link, 
Uh, it does give us a little bit of money. We greatly appreciate that. That helps support the channel. It helps us put out videos, things like that. Uh, unfortunately, said because the deal is so good, the coupon code does not work. We do have a coupon code, but which is two crazy ketos, but it will not work on this bundle. And it the bundle is build your own breakfast with the pancake, the muffin, the hot cereals, and the granola. Unfortunately, the cereal is not included in it. Yeah, but I love the hot cereal too. The hot cereals are really good. If you like like cream of wheat, things like that, they do have good ingredients. This is the chocolate pancake mix. And so the deal is 15% off if you spend $35 or more, 30% off if you spend $100 or more, and free shipping on any order over $50. So I wanted to mention that. They have good stuff, good quality stuff. And I know their cookies aren't on sale, but they're high, the high key cookies. They have a new flavor, which is gonna be here tomorrow for a review, mm -hmm. and it is mint chocolate chip. Oh my goodness. So those will be here tomorrow. I'm excited. That's like your fave. Bones Coffee. We gave it a try. We we have like it's gone back here. and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I don't have a special deal. Now we do have, there is a link down below. If you use that link, it you us, get $5 off and it, it gives us, us points coffee. to buy coffee. So if you want to buy us a cup of coffee and you like Bones, don't buy it just to no. buy us a cup of coffee. Uh, but you, uh, if you use that link, you get $5 off and then it gives us, I guess, $5. I don't even know what it is. But we really have gone back and forth on flavored coffees because some flavored coffees, they use really low quality beans. They use horrible chemicals. So I really, really investigated. They're a good company. Yeah. They're using good ingredients. So we finally gave it a try at what the recommendation order? of Aaron Does the Keto. Aaron Does the Keto. And Viva J and Christy Davis over on uh, Sofa King Keto. And we finally Keto gave Village. it a try, Keto Village. Yeah, I, I always want to call her Sober King Keto, but it's Keto Village now. But yeah, so we gave it a try. We really like it. So far, we bought five different flavors. We bought the chocolate orange, which I like. Rachel's like, eh. Chocolate orange. Smells incredible. Smells incredible. It should be a potpourri. I want to just have it smelling through the house. Anthony keeps walking by the bag and just like doing the scrunchy really thing good. to smell it. But I wasn't like in love with the flavor. I'm actually wondering how my friend Beth would enjoy it because she always loved chocolate oranges like growing up. Right. What would be her thing? That was never my thing. Yep. It smells incredible, but it wasn't my favorite flavor. Bananas so far, Foster. Rachel's favorite is the Bananas Foster. It really tastes like there's a Bananas Foster going on yeah. in there. Now, the other flavors that we tried was Jingle Bones. Rachel said the flavors aren't coming through. I'm going to make it stronger next time and it, see if they come through just, better. It tastes like really good quality coffee, but I didn't You're not taste getting the flavor. flavoring. And then the ones that we have not tried yet is the Grog. I remember what it was called. I'm very excited about that. And the Macadamia one. I'm super excited about So if about you've that. had Bones Coffee, let us know down in the comment section what flavors what are your favorite flavors and which flavors should we stay away from because i plan on trying them all i really want the t-shirts but they're expensive their t-shirts the are too. Off. i want the mugs have you seen the mugs but they're like 35 dollars. yeah that's an investment but i love i like the designs i love the whole i've always been like a skeleton kind of design thing Dia de los so Muertos. we did want to say that we finally after investigating we did try it we really like it i have applied to be an affiliate but no word from them yet but we do but, have that five dollar off coupon code. but bananas foster you like that one very good yeah it's totally true to flavor okay um food that we had this week you know a lot of people have been asking us can you show what you ate for the week so we are trying 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 to get better at photographing our foods we're not great though you know who is great at it Keto Conduct. Yes. Conduct with a K. Gorgeous couple. Gorgeous food. Gorgeous Well, pictures. they're Instagram people. Like, I am horrible at photography. I mean, I'm getting at better it. at video, but photography, you've got to be good. And my thing is this. I don't know how they do it and still get to eat warm food because we try to take a picture. Yes. And by the time I've gotten the shot I want. I'm ticked. I feel like I just took it out of the freezer. And yes. Rachel's just yelling at me like, that's one of the biggest reasons we never video and it's photography our food. Because yeah, Rachel's like, I just want to eat. By the time you get this photo, it's going to be cold. <laughs> Would you want to go take a photo of pictures if you had to look at this face? So we are trying to get better at it now. This past week, uh, we have been doing a protein sparing modified fast, which we have not finished editing that video. 
should come out sometime this week. We have to film our final thoughts on like the whole deal about it, but that should be coming out soon. But because of that, uh, a lot of our dishes you're gonna see, we don't have everything, but a lot of them are very high protein and kind of low calorie, but we you had some what? good food. Why don't we make a third meal every single time you eat? You make you make meal for me, meal for you. Let's make a third meal and that is just to photograph. <laughs> when it gets pictured, it'll get pictured. <clears throat> okay, so on Monday, we had a very simple, it was a very low calorie day and we needed to have a bunch of protein. So on Monday we had like, it was shredded chicken with some egg in it and a little bit of seasoning on top of a bed of lettuce. It looks like there's maggots on top of it, but that is actually the schoolyard snacks, hot Cheetos. We are in love with those things. There's so much flavor and yet yeah. it's very low carb, it's very low calorie. And decent ingredients. It will fit into pretty much anybody's life. Yeah, they're really, really good. I mean, two total carbs, I think, on the, the hot ones. And unfortunately, Rachel's really mad. When we first got them, Rachel's like, the hot ones are okay, but I really like the cheese ones. Not so now. when I ordered them the, the second time, I only ordered the cheese ones and now we don't have any hot ones. And she's like, where's all the hot ones? I'm like, I don't have any. You said you liked the cheese ones. Right. Yes, but I have changed my mind like women do. Well, unfortunately, they don't have any more. I mean, I do have them on like the subscription thing, but I don't know. I got a thing saying they were being mailed out. I don't know if that was just like I've been billed, but they're still on back order. I don't know how that's going to work. You can sign up for like a mailing list thing to let them know that like so that you know when they're back in stock. I that keep, was Monday. I keep checking my messages, but alas, it's only Joanne Fabric. <laughs> Yet again. Of course, on Tuesday, we had... Chicken wings. Wings. Because it's Buffalo Wild Wings Tuesday. We love wings. We just love wings. Well, we, and we like them half price. Now we have made a video in the past about how to order a Buffalo Wild Wings. If you haven't seen that, I will leave a link for that right up there over Rachel's head. Super helpful. Wednesday, we shot a video for our chicken piccata. It was delicious. It came out really good. So that is of course what we ate on that day. Now, if you're gonna look at that photograph, like I said, I am not terrible. a food photographer. I'm not very good at it. Who wants a cafeteria I'm not good at staging. Food? Like, I wish I could be Carrie Brown. Yes. Right? Carrie Brown has the most gorgeous food pictures. You know what we need to do? We need to eventually, one day, have a cookbook and then just have Carrie come down here and make all of our food like we're gonna let her cook it too because oh, yeah she's gonna be better at cooking it too absolutely and then ha photograph all of our food because like her pictures are amazing but amazing so the picture doesn't look awesome but i promise you it tastes great it is so tasty and i actually can't wait until we start getting a response from people who are making the recipe because the recipe just went up this week and so it's low calorie if you concern yourself with calorie it is a little bit higher protein if you were using chicken breasts instead of chicken thighs. But use the thighs. You can use either one. But I mean, I think it comes out if you're a six ounce, with a six ounce chicken breast following that recipe and that is consuming everything. Like, you know, a lot of times we make it and we don't use all of the sauce. We pour, you know, there's sauce left over. But if you consume every single thing in that Which recipe, I love. it's a hundred and like 90 calories for a six ounce breast. And that's again, if you have it, but if you only use half of the sauce poured over the chicken breast, you're cutting out some of the fat, you're cutting out, you know, it's, so it's really good. It's very flavorful, but it was funny. So my mom said, oh, I want to make that so much, but like. Mm, it's very quick and easy to make. Can I make chicken thighs though? And I was like, yes, yeah. this is not a game with rules right. to it. Yep. You are absolutely allowed to make it with what you could, you could. Pour it over a steak if you want. And like, again, we came out with that because we needed to find something that was going to be high protein, low fat because yeah. of the protein sparing modified fast. Because basically for doing this protein sparing modified fast, we have fallen on a go-to meal. You know, people talk about, yeah. and we asked about it last week, like go-to meals, like Rachel can eat the same thing every day. Absolutely. And that is pretty much what we have been having every single day. And that is this, some type of a fajita 
or taco, taco salad. Yes. So this here is actually chicken breast. We bought some chicken breast. We chopped them up and shrimp with some green pepper, just a little bit of onion. And when I say a little bit of onion, I'm talking about like, I take like an eighth of an onion, just enough to give it some flavor, but not a lot because there are carbs and onions. Mm -hmm. Same thing with green pepper. And we take like a small green pepper, we chop that up. Everything is being cooked on the Blackstone, but that has become our go-to meal, like at least three to four days a week. It's replaced because of the protein sparing modified fast. It's replaced like our normal ground beef and eggs. Right. And it's been really good. So that is now going to be incorporated back into our regular food along with the eggs and the ground beef and stuff because we never had it before. No. And it's really, really good. And it's been really nice for summer. Mm -hmm. It feels summery to have more like salads and stuff. Whereas like, you know, you get into the fall and when it gets cold, you start wanting things like soup and chili and that kind of stuff. But right now, it just feels very fresh. Right. And you can throw whatever you want in there. Sometimes if we've had a cucumber or a piece of a part of a cucumber, we're like, all right, you know, right. empty out the refrigerator with it. And for those of you who are asking, we do not concern ourselves with any of the carbs that may happen to be in the lettuce. That's pretty much what that is. It's, it's a fajita on top of a bed of lettuce. There's not even anything else in there. There's no other vegetables in there, except for once in a while, some cauliflower rice. We are not concerning ourselves. There is no way you're going to eat so much lettuce that you're going to kick yourself out of ketosis. I mean, Dr. Silas has talked about that all the it time. Is so we are not concerning ourselves with the carbs That is that. never the thing that I have a problem with. And I don't think most people do. I don't right. think most people are like, hey, I'm trying to get more lettuce in my diet and don't you try to make me go on, you know, total carbs because lettuce. Right. Mine is, I want keto snacks that start at 50 carbs. Or and, nuts. And work their way down to one carb because net carb math. Right. So my thing is, I can do net carbs if you want on anything that God made. Right. Anything that is like a vegetable, you know, cruciferous vegetable, I have no problem doing net carbs on that because I can trust the natural fiber that God has put into that vegetable. We strongly advise, at minimum, not deducting the fiber and the sugar alcohols and all of that stuff in anything that is processed, unless maybe you're having a treat day. That's what we do. We have a dessert day, and on our dessert day, we say, you know what? We're going to keep our net carbs under 20 and our total car carbs under 30 to 40. That will allow us to have a little bit of ice cream. So even if those carbs aren't really like coming off and your body is using at least some of them, you're not screwing yourself if you have 40 or 50 total right. carbs one day a week. But if you're doing that every single day, there's a good chance you you're will causing stall. issues for yourself. You will stall yourself and you may even gain. But it's been our experience because the carboholic on the inside of us wants to use the math to get what we want. I will use any excuse when I am in a frenzy, when I am in a carboholic frenzy, I will say whatever I need to say to myself in order to get what I want. Right, and I've said it before, I can easily turn 200 total carbs into less than 20 net carbs. I yeah. can turn it into less than 10 carbs. Yep. Challenge me. I'm telling you, I can do it. Challenging Snapton. I so, will yeah. shoot myself in the foot. I am so good at hitting my foot. I will shoot boop every single time. So yeah, a great compromise would be if you need the net carbs, if you want to have an occasional treat or have some nuts or something like that, but you still want to have some salad, a couple of vegetables, something like that. If you need to deduct the fiber out of yeah. that stuff, you're not going to hurt yourself. But all of the processed stuff, we strongly recommend some form of a total carb thing. If you're not going to drink that, I'm drinking it. I'm saving it over here. Okay. Let's talk about, oh, before we even get into this. Yes. Uh, I did want to give a little shout out to our good friend, Christopher. Christopher. Also known as Slapastic. Amazing gentleman. He has his own YouTube channel called Slapstick Keto. I'm going to leave a link up here and put a link down below. 
And I just want to shout out, he is a member of our Facebook family group. He is in there constantly encourage people. We actually interviewed him for Keto and Friends. For our Keto and Friends for like all of the tremendous results he's had, both weight and health issues. The health thing blows me away. And he was actually the one who turned us on to making our own bacon. God bless him. And he had sent us this two things. He sent us what was the the bacon, the jam, bacon jam which is which was amazing. Amazing. And a peanut butter sauce that he makes. So good. And it is so good. Well, he recently on his channel put up how to make the peanut butter sauce. So I just wanted to put that link down below. Do yourself a favor. Go check it out. It is really 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 good. Yeah. Okay, red and fast. Speaking of all this delicious food, how about no food at all? How would that go? We like fasting. We do. Uh, we do occasionally do a group fast here on our channel. And we're doing the coolest group fast ever. So we are hosting this Thursday, if you're watching this this week. Amazing. On July 30th, 2020, we will be hosting the Redmond Salt, uh, Redmond Salt Channel, Redmond Life Challenge. It's over on the Redmond's Facebook fasting group. There's a link down below. You need to go sign up to like, just like our group to become Be a member. Be part of it. See what's going on. And uh, it's gonna, it's a simple fast. It's not an extended fast. So if you've never tried fasting, hours. this is a great one to try. 24 hours. It's going to start at 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, which means you're going to sleep through 12 yes. hours of a 24 hour fast. I love that. Right? That is good math. Well, most people will sleep through a 12 hour fast. I'm not gonna sleep through a 12 hour oh, fast. If I, I got 12 hours of sleep, I would be like amazed. But I'm, I'm tucking in to, to get my 12 hours. So yeah, we're gonna be hosting that. We hope you guys all join us. So we'll be going live over on the Redmond's uh, Facebook one time during this week and then again when the fast starts. You're on like mountain time. And then again, yeah, mountain daylight time. So they're two hours behind us. They're okay. in Utah time because they're based in Utah. So we'll be live on their Facebook group a couple times on Friday. Of course, when it ends, we'll be answering questions. So we hope you guys all join us. It'd be weird if they were in Utah, but they went on like Massachusetts time. That would be weird. So number one thing that you need to have when you're fasting is getting your electrolytes salt. in and salt. Salt's going to help you two ways. It's going to keep your sodium up so you're not getting headaches and nauseous and, and lightheaded. Also, it's going to help you not eat. So you can suck on these salt licks. These are great. If you've never seen them before, I call them adult pacifiers. They are fantastic. I don't think anybody realizes how many times you're not hungry, you're just used to this behavior. Action. It's just the same way as somebody who has trouble with cigarettes. It's not just the nicotine that you're addicted to, if you've ever smoked cigarettes. It's also that, that action. action. You are in a behavioral thing. If you're used to breaking, like, hey, after I eat, I smoke. If there's a certain time of the day that you stop your work and go on a smoke break, there's a lot of behavior right. that's associated with it. And it's the same thing for food. I am used to, I need to chew. That's why I chewed so much gum mm -hmm. for such a long time. When I would get stressed out, I would need that action of chewing. Right. Well, it's interesting how you can replace it and wean yourself off of something that you don't want to be doing anymore by doing that. It actually helps me. If I remember to do it, if I put it on, on my nightstand and do it, I don't even bite my nails as much. That's right. Because I just want something to like put in my mouth. Right. It's wild. And a lot of times when you think you're craving sugar, you're actually craving salt. So it's something to Upside think about. Down. I mean, Doc Thomas Alaro did a great video about a study about someone who was having that issue. But a lot of times, yeah, we're craving, we think we're craving sugar, but you're actually craving salt because your body wants the salt. So there is a link down below uh, for, if you want to get Redmond from them, you, that's where you're going to get the Salt Lakes. You can buy it in a lot of stores. Uh, if you use our link, it does help support the channel. We Thank also you. have a 15% off coupon code from them. Uh, and that's two crazy ketos, and we're gonna link that down below. But we love Redmond. I mean, we've we've put up lots of videos about them. First of all, they're awesome people. They are. But most importantly, it's an awesome product. Now, some people do complain about like the grit. The grit is the minerals. You want those. We're not minerals. used to getting the good stuff. We're right. used to the crappy stuff. Right. And if you're interested in buying American, it don't get any more American than this company. 
And also, again, what he said with the sweet thing, if you're somebody who's like, I can't seem to kick my sweet tooth, it seems like my sweetness threshold keeps going up and up and up, try this. You might be surprised at what happens as a result of using these little salt rocks. Right. Yeah, but we absolutely love it. And we hope you guys will all join us this week on Thursday, July 30th for the fast. Again, 24 hour fast. So if you've never done a fast, this is the place to start. It is. And it's also good if you're like, I can't do this because nobody else in my house or nobody else at work is doing this. I don't want to do things by myself. There's 15,000 people in this. You are so not alone. You are the opposite of alone. Right. Let's get into some subscriber of the weeks. Before we do, let's take a quick commercial break. And we're back. <laughs> that was quick. I didn't even have a time to like fill up my coffee again. Okay, so uh, we every week like to honor some of our subscribers. Uh, usually comes from our Facebook family group. So if you're not a member of our Facebook family group, go ahead and join that. There's like 2,300 people in there. They're in there to encourage you. And we always say, please, 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 please share your stories. We're not looking for you to share your stories so that we have content. No. We ask you guys to share your stories because your story is going to encourage someone. There is someone out there right now that is going through something that you went through or something that you are currently going through and they're like, nobody's ever experienced this before. Nobody knows what it's like and it's just not true. And your story is going to encourage them. And don't wait until you hit the finish yes. line in your mind. Don't wait and say, well, when I've lost this many sizes or this much weight, if you were starting this out and you were 390 pounds and now you are 375 pounds, can you start posting pictures and posting your journey in there? Because there's somebody that you're at right now, the place that you're at right now, that's a goal for them. That's right. That they have not seen achieved yet. So you are that encouragement because you know what? If you go into a place and you're like, nobody looks like me here. Mm -hmm. I don't see myself either. I feel too old or I feel like, you know, our interests aren't the same. You leave that space right. and you go to one more place where you're like, well, I don't feel like I fit in here. So when someone says, hey, you're at the 220 mark or you're at the three. 40 mark and that's where their first goal is and they see you there they're like this is my place that's right and it's really important and again like rachel saying make sure you're sh like along the way because we always say the scale is the devil but so if you're posting up pictures of yourself every month every two months again it's not that we need content. It's that, first of all, it's going to encourage somebody else, but also you're gonna be able to look back on those photos and be like, hey, look at this photo I put up last month in the Facebook family group, and now look, wow, I see the difference. We don't see the difference when we look in the mirror every day, but we do see the difference when we look at a photo of ourselves from a month, two months, a year ago. Yeah. So it's really, really important. So make sure you go sign up for the Facebook family group to encourage people and to be encouraged and share your story. Now, if you don't have Facebook, you can send us your story at twocrazyketos at gmail.com or at stories at twocrazyketos. Because I think that, com. like you're saying, we don't need the content, but people need the context. That's right. People need to That's see perfect. what's going on all around it. So this week, I did want to honor one of our early subscribers, someone who's been around for a long time, and somebody who in our Facebook family group is always, always there encouraging people. He's had tremendous success. He has had uh, a lot of success, not only with his weight, but with health issues. Yes. And he he's somebody that every time you see his face pop up in the Facebook group, you know he's gonna give you an encouraging word or he's gonna put a smile on your face. Absolutely. And that is Vivid J. Look at that. And I'm that. just gonna switch this over so we can see these. Two year ketoversary. Last two years photos, red is right before starting, blue is from last year, and white is from a couple of weeks ago. So I didn't put the white one in there. One more photo. So like, yeah, he has been doing amazing, but also he has had so many health obstacles that could have translated into excuses for him That's to right. just be like, you know what, I'm disappointed right now and I'm just gonna give up. And he doesn't give up, mm -hmm. he just doesn't. So I just, I love him and he's definitely somebody that you can ask questions of, reach out to, and he will um, answer you in just such an uplifting way. Yep, okay. 
The next person we wanted to recognize real quick, we don't have an actual subscriber of the week with a story, set, um, but these are people who have been here for a while. We admire. And we admire them, and again, when they put these photos up, it encourages other people. And that is our good buddy, Heath. He, AKA Porky Pig. Yes, he's Porky Pigging it. <laughs> and he, uh, Heath has been on keto for, I think, a year and a half. Yes. He's lost about 125 pounds. Him and Shelly are amazing. Talk about uplifting. And if you're looking for photos of gorgeous food, He's the one to check in he, with. He's got a YouTube channel as well. We'll leave a link for that down below. Meaty and Monday. They they do a lot of meat. They do mostly carnivore. Yes. And But he just recently put up a thing yesterday in our group. And he just said, um, non-scale victory time. This morning I donated 18 button-up shirts, three pairs of blue jeans, six jean shorts, all because they're too large for me. And look at that before and after on the belt. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, it's just... When you talk about, yeah, a non-scale victory, I don't care what the scale says. That is a huge amount of change, yeah. right? It just, it absolutely comes off in your clothes way before you even see it in the scale. I mean, he's had amazing success on the scale as well, but like, whoa, that changed your whole closet. That's right. You ready for your, your whole closet to change? Stick with this keto thing. Your whole closet's about to change. Yep. Amazing. Now, we are going to add another layer into Keto on the Couch. So we've got our subscriber of the week, and we like to celebrate the, the little milestone victories. But we're going to add in the post of the week off of yes. our Facebook family group. And this is going to be... A post that just makes us stop and go, whoa. Wow. Not necessarily like a victory post, something that makes us smile, something that makes you think, you know, so it's not necessarily something like where you've had a change, but just something to encourage somebody. And this week's is actually from Shannon. Shannon. And Shannon just put this up. Just a little reminder, this is what five pounds of fat looks like. Remember that the next time you say, I only lost Five pounds. I can't tell you how many times somebody prefaces whatever like celebration they have to share with I have only lost this yep. much weight. That it, it almost always it's like the once upon a time of keto sharing. I've only lost this much, but I wanted to go ahead and put this out there. Look at that. Right. Five pounds is a huge it's amount a huge of space. Amount. And here's the thing you need to remember. When you're on a regular diet, and again, we always say keto is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. You're changing the way you eat, but if you're hopefully new, permanently. But a lot of times when you go on Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or just a starvation diet or that kind of thing, you're starvation. losing fat and muscle. Yeah. For the most part on keto, so long as you're keeping your protein levels up. You have to get your protein in. This is not a low protein diet. You need, 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 need protein. Okay. Stop thinking that if you eat too much protein, your hair you're going to get out. kicked out of keto. If you don't eat enough protein, you're going to lose your hair. You're going to lose muscle. You're going to have wrinkly you're skin. You're going to have wrinkly skin. So you got to get your protein in. But for the most part on keto, you're losing mostly fat. So when you only lose five pounds, you're losing a tremendous amount of bulk. And that's something we even have to remind ourselves. Rachel come Constant. to me like, I only lost, you know, two pounds on this fast or this challenge we did. I'm like, but look at how much smaller you got because you only lost fat. So it's something that's really, when you are having that moment and you're like, oh my gosh, I only lost two pounds. Remember that picture. Yeah. Because two pounds of fat is a, a lot. lot. So just remember that. So thank you so much for putting that photo up. So Claire put something up. She hey, said, Claire. I am thinking of trying my first extended fast on August 3rd through the 7th. My husband is taking his kids out of town for the week. And in my pre-keto days, I would use some time alone as an excuse to binge. Same. I'm trying to prepare. I have lots of tea. I'm going to try out the circle water uh, cartridges that are just fruit essence and are unsweetened. I will be busy with work during the day and I have some crafts, some diamond painting Ooh. I can do uh, to keep me busy in the evenings. But what tips do you have? It feels kind of overwhelming, but my doctor, who is a keto-friendly endocrinologist, awesome. is on board with this. Wow, I love that. 
I think that I think you've got it nailed for the most part. I mean, when I look at that list of you've got things for yourself to keep busy, I mean, that yeah. is my biggest thing is that when I'm busy, I don't think about eating. It's when I lay down, watch TV, or don't do anything, that's when I want to eat. But if I'm super busy, if you have a distraction, I'm distracted. But I think you've got it. The biggest thing I would say for our have tips some, have some salt, make sure you have electrolytes, you know, use Redmond. Uh, you can use the Redmond electrolyte drinks, use keto chow drops, but stay on top of your electrolytes. That's going to be the most important. That's what's going to help you get through your fast. And again, that's stuff that we're going to be talking about on our fast group. You know, again, you said you're going to do that on August 3rd. Maybe you want to start off on July 30th with a quick 24 hour fast just to get yourself used to it and then do that extended fast on August 3rd. Yeah. Where you're like, this is, wasn't so bad. So Christopher wrote, Hey Christopher. Congrats on getting to host the fast. Thank you. I'm going to be camping that day, so I won't get to join. That's no right. way am I fasting when I camp. The best part about fasting is the food. I'm assuming that he meant yes. camping is the food. Absolutely. In fact, I saw somebody that had posted that they had made a foil meal. Where, and I was like, man, we need to do that. Even if we're not like camping where you're like, you're putting the meat and they had radishes yeah. and they had um, all kinds of, and cheese inside of the full pack and had like cooked it over a campfire you could totally do that in our wood pellet grill right just move back the, move back the thing, the or thing. Build so the fire pit flame broiled Ooh, we should build i want to build a deck in the backyard next to the i like where this is coop. going and rachel won't let me but what if i built the deck and then built a fire pit in the middle of then can i build a deck now i'm listening <laughs> okay next one Brianna wrote. Hey, Brianna. Speaking of rolling up thigh skin. Oh, because I was talking about shorts. Yeah. She said, I have to roll up my boobs and stuff them in my bra. We have to keep our sense of humor or we would just be crying all the time. Same. I mean, I'm, I've got my Victoria's Secret and the secret is that there is a lot of underwire and padding going on in here because, yeah, I have to make, I. it's like I'm making my own cigarettes. Like, lick them and roll them right into that thing. I knew you'd get a kick out of that one. I love it. Yvonne wrote. Hey, Yvonne. Where do you buy your dryer balls and what brand are they? Also, what is the name of the essential oil that you use as well? Thank you. Where do you get your balls, Joe? <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> Okay, so we get the dryer balls off of Amazon. I'm gonna leave a link down below. We've tried a lot of, they're pretty much all the same. The ones that we really like now are the darker ones because they don't look as stained when you start adding the oils right. on. The, the pure white ones, once you start adding those essential oils, like, they, they start looking a little dirty. So we're getting the ones that are like the black wool kind of thing, but I'll leave a link down below. There's two different sizes. There's a large one, which are like extra large ones, and then there's a smaller one. We actually have them both, but I, the the smaller ones are good if you just have a few things in there. But if you're like us and you're doing like 20 loads of laundry a day, right? You know, the bigger ones are nice. But it's nice. We, I, I'm gonna tell you, I suggest having a few of them because what happens is, is they get tangled up in your laundry. You take your laundry out, you put them in a laundry basket, and then you're like, you're going to do the next load, and you don't have any more dryer balls. So we what have. Happens when you run out of balls. <laughs> I want to say we probably have about 20 of them or something like that. We always have like five or six in the dryer. And this way you can kind of keep changing them out. By the time you get to the the other basket, they come back. It does things. And I feel like it, it helps to like really make it only one cycle in the dryer. Get your stuff dry. And as far as the oil, you get it from Whole Foods, right? I like the one that's called Cleanse from Whole Foods. But that's, you know, it's just smell is a preferential. Yeah. You know, it's subjective. I've even gotten some from Hobby Lobby because you're just getting like the essential oils. Right. And you can use a 40% off coupon. I'm sure yeah. even Michaels and Joanne Fabrics, God bless them, probably has it also if you want to use it with a coupon. Yeah. Okay, next up, Shanta Road. Hey, Shanta. We did not have a set food. Oh, we're talking about like, did you eat a same thing on the a day of the week? Right. So she says, we did not have set food, but Friday was fast food day and Sunday was the soul food cooking day. That was the day we all went out by my mom, um, was big on cooking and leftovers. So yeah, I mean, that totally makes sense to me because my family was the same way. Like you met for Sunday dinner. So maybe there wasn't, and, and we, my grandmother was like a Southern cook, like fried chicken, 
you know, uh, a lot of like collard greens, right. mustard greens, that sort of thing. So yeah, like Sunday was when you got together as a family and probably, yeah, you whatever, like you probably got together with your grandparents and it was like German or Polish food on that specific yeah, time. Yeah, we didn't live in the same state as my grandparents, but yeah, we always had the same kind of stuff when we came down. Like Opa would make us like Hassenpfeffer, some kind Rabbit. of traditional German dish. Ann wrote. Hey, Ann. She said, I grew up in a large family and we had chicken, chicken, and more chicken for our dinners. That was my growing up. Yep. Grilled cheese or peanut butter and jelly for lunch. And I think that's why I struggle with preparing and eating chicken. I was so overloaded with it as a child. My Gap. mom... My mom says that all the time. Like they almost had chicken of some sort every single day of the week because that was like an inexpensive thing. And they just ate a tremendous amount of chicken. So when she got married, she ate a bunch of beef instead because it was like anything but chicken. I right. don't want to make chicken because I ate so much chicken. So it's funny. So I wind, wound up, you know, growing up in a heavy beef place because that was her response to chicken. And I grew up in a heavy chicken family. And it was funny because when Rachel and I first met, I did all the cooking as I do now, but I did even more cooking back then. Yeah. And everything was always a chicken dish. And I remember going like, where's the beef? I'm like, I don't eat beef. <laughs> where's the beef? I you sound know, like that old lady from Wendy's. I, I never really ate beef because I just grew up always eating chicken. Number one, it was, it was supposedly healthier and it was cheaper. So even when we were supposed to have a meatloaf or burgers, we were eating turkey burgers, chicken burgers. It was rare that we had beef. I don't, I can't even remember. I certainly, I don't know if we did, I don't remember it ever having steak growing up. I mean, maybe once in a while ground beef or like if we went camping or something like that, even our hot dogs were the combination, right? The lips and buttholes. Meaty jumbo. <laughs> the ones with like every single ingredient in it, like, and it was chicken and pork and beef. I don't think we ever had beef hot dogs. I mean, we had a lot of chicken franks and turkey franks and things like that. So it was weird when we, now that we eat so much beef and we eat very little chicken, it, it, it was a weird dynamic when we first got together because Rachel's like, I want beef. And I'm like, no, I want chicken. But it's interesting that your response could be totally different. So my mom had the same response and did to chicken. Like, I don't, I eat so much chicken, I don't want to eat chicken. Whereas I eat so much beef, I only know beef. Right. Like it was, it's like a totally different response to it. So Shelly wrote. Hey Shelly. <laughs> How I clean first, I light a candle. Okay, I'm so right there with you. Sweep, Swiffer, clean up the cat's messes, and if time allows it, dust. Yes, <laughs> dust is the very last thing on my plate. If guests plan to stay over, then I will refresh the bed linens because that's how often act someone actually stays with us. Yes, oh my so Lord. So we were talking about last week, like what do you do when you clean? Because the cleanest our house ever is is when somebody – Calls you visit. like 30 minutes prior, right? And they're like, hey, I'm on my way over. And you're like, what? 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 No, 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 please. And you're trying to come up with excuses, but there are no, right? Like when pastor called up and said, I know you threw your back out, so I'm going to bring you lunch. You can't you're exactly like, tell pastor don't come, right. but you start panicking. And that is the cleanest our house ever gets. Is it's terrible. When when you're being sprung upon, You right? need a different wife. <laughs> she needs to get her act together. It's not that the house is messy. We, I don't think we're messy. We're disorganized yeah. because we live busy lives. We're cluttered. But Rachel had asked, what do you do? Like when you have to clean quickly, what is your order? Yeah. Okay, next one, we have Sel Marie. Hey, Sel Marie. And I just put this up because I wanted to address something on here. Uh, the serving thing we're gonna talk about in a minute, but she said, I hope the label is indeed wrong. And her problem here is it says it's got two servings, which is two eggs, and that it has three total carbs and only thing that's supposed to be in there is some eggs and then some vinegar and some hot sauce. And I wanted to address it because there are carbs in eggs. Yeah. A lot of times we forget about that. We don't even usually count them, but there are some carbs in there. So there is like 0.6 carbs in a 50 gram egg, which like is a large egg. about a large egg. So if you're eating four eggs, you're eating about two total carbs. Now again, it's a, it's a nature kind of thing. I'm okay with it. Some people are gonna count them, some people don't. We personally don't count them, even if we eat 10 eggs in the day. But there's also, usually carbs in a hot sauce. 
even if the label says zero. I love Frank's hot sauce, mm-hmm. but I've never used a serving that is requested. You like, like the dipping cup. I like a dipping cup full of Frank's Red Hot, but if you look on the label, it's like a tablespoon. Yeah. I've never used a tablespoon. So you're probably using like three tablespoons and Rachel likes to finish it. So, you know, like some people will be like, you give them a cup of the hot sauce and you're going to use it. And if there's leftover, there's leftover. I, Rachel's I like, no, no, no. Cup. I've counted that in my macros. I'm having every single bit of it. But yeah. if you fill that thing up and it's three tablespoons, it's probably a couple of carbs because of the way the rounding thing works. That's why we always tell you when it says zero carb, unless you really, 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 really know it, Round up. It's never going to hurt you to round up. Heavy cream. Most labels say zero, but there is a carb or it's like a half a carb in a tablespoon. So round up. If you have a tablespoon, it's not going to hurt you to say you had a carb. You're just protecting yourself. Same thing with spices. A quarter of a teaspoon is usually a serving size on a spice. That's going to say zero carbs. But if you use two teaspoons or a tablespoon... That's that's the cre- the carb creep. That's the hidden carbs that we talk about all the time. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you most likely that label is not wrong. It's just that they get to round down on eggs and stuff. And the company that did the investigation for them or the analysis Actually of it. Actually fully disclosed. Is fully disclosing it. I would, I'd rather count it as three carbs. And if, you know what, if it puts you over a couple carbs for the day, who cares? It was eggs and hot sauce, but it's just something to think about. Yeah. We did have another one I wanted to show you real quick, and that was from Shauna. Yes. Shauna says, how closely do you read labels? On my journey right now, it's important to me. Why have extra ingredients that aren't needed? Friday, I did an Instacart grocery delivery from Smart and Final. They have a heavy cream I like for my keto child milkshakes, and it says Producers Natural Heavy Cream. That's the company. The shopper, however, bought a different heavy cream by the same brand. Look at the difference in ingredients. Good luck to yourselves. Oh, be good to yourselves. Read the labels. And if you look at here, both the same company. One of them, the ingredient is cream. The other one is cream and some preservatives, some carrageenan, and some other things. It added calories and it added carbs. Yeah, so it is something you need to make sure you're looking at nutrition label. And again, because they do get to play the rounding game. We do have that video we talked about with nutrition labels. I wish this was more like Europe where everything is based on like what's in the container or 100 grams. But Rachel found a great example. Wow, so I... We grew up eating this. And we're not trying to pick on this particular company because there's a lot of products like this. We purchased it. Actually, Anthony got this one because it's so tasty. If you've ever had any of the Hillshire Farm, this this shape, we're used to having this shape, right? This is the smoked sausage. It's made with pork, turkey, and beef, kind of like the lips and buttholes that you've talked about. But it is delicious. I am not lying. It is really tasty, okay, to eat. But... Me and Anthony are not both on keto. I'm on keto. He is not. He is not so concerned about the carbs. That but... keto child's calling my name. <laughs> I was like, what are you looking at? <laughs> um. So anyway, so you look at this. How many servings would you say this is? Two. I say it's that we used to eat this all the time. And I, I'm, I'm half German, half Polish. Yeah. I grew up eating kielbasa. I feel like you would cut it's ha- it. It's, I, we cut you, it in the middle. Right. That's two servings. And that would be two servings. It's seven. This According is, to the label. This is seven servings. So for Anthony, he was like... It gets worse. He was like, dude, seven servings. That means if he's more concerned with the calories, there's 170 calories per serving. So if And he's like, I've totally just eaten this entire thing. So what is 170 times seven? 1190 calories. calories. So I'm like, okay, I'm not concerned about that because I'm on keto. We're only going to eat one meal or two meals in a day. I'm not so worried about... I can easily eat that whole thing. Oh, I could... I have absolutely eaten a whole thing of this. I'm not so worried about the calories because I'm on keto and it is meat, right? So how many carbs can it can it have? Seven servings, each serving three carbs. And that's rounded down probably. No fiber. No fiber in this. There, I can't play any math games with this. I mean, even if it was just like, okay, it is clearly a processed food. It's sausage. But 
If I want to play the fiber game, I can't even do that because there is no fiber. So if you eat this, Which net I, or total, you just succeeded your carbs most likely for the 21 diet. 21 carbs in this sausage. And then it's got seven grams of protein, 15 grams of fat. And see, the problem is when you look at this, the ingredients in this are not just meat. It's First of all, you always have to look at this. Meat ingredients. Meat ingredients. And it says pork and beef, mechanically separated turkey, water, corn syrup, and then 2% or less of dextrose, isolated soy, isolated soy. It's, so it's not even 100% beef or meat. It's also they're adding soy in as a filler. Wow. Soy protein, monosodium glutate, glutate, glutamate, natural flavor, salt, sodium, erythrobate, sodium nitrate, sodium phosphate, spices made with beef collagen casing. The healthiest thing in here is the beef collagen casing. So here's the thing. And again, we're not picking on them. I'm not picking on A them. lot of sausages are gonna be like this. You really need to look at ingredients. We love hot dogs. Dr. Barry says you dogs. can do keto on like just hot dogs and mustard. But remember, a lot of hot dogs are gonna have spices. Spices are gonna add carbs. I love Costco hot dogs. Sometimes yes. we will go to Costco and I get a Costco hot dog with no bun and a little bit of sauerkraut on the side. There's like four carbs in that. Now I'm willing to eat those four carbs because the spices are delicious, but I can't eat three of them or four of them. But this is like almost the size of a Costco. A Costco hot dog's not much smaller than this. And I, I mean, we just, we have this in our house because we purchased it and we didn't purchase it to hate on it. We purchased it because it was like part of the kid's childhood and right. like you just got it and you're like, how bad could it be? And I honestly, cause we buy a lot of different sausages and I thought, how bad could it be? Right. And you may be like, well, this is a little dirtier than dirt, normal dirty keto. It don't, it, you know, it's not that big of a problem. 21 carbs and almost 1,200 calories. This is way dirtier than I want to get. Yeah, so just make sure you're reading labels. So thank you, Shauna, for just pointing yes. that out. It's a really important thing. Uh, along with ingredients, Lori put this up. She hey, said, I saw these today in Walmart. I have so many mixed feelings about these types of products because I feel I'm never going to conquer my sugar cravings. I totally know how you feel. I have honestly been buying darker and darker chocolate to try to curb that. If it is sweet, I have a sweet tooth. So the sweeter the, the chocolate, the sweeter the keto goodie, it just makes it harder for me yeah. to not want it every single Everybody day. Everybody is different. I mean, Dr. Sowers talks about it all the time. Like we're carb addicts. Like he is really against a lot of the keto products or m almost all of them because the biggest thing is it's not whether or not it's actually keto. It's not whether or not like it's actually low carb. It's that a lot of times it triggers us. Yeah. I don't have as many problems with these kind of things as Rachel. But because of that, speaking of things that are sweet and delicious, like that's why you don't see Rachel do the keto box review because eating a bunch of those things in one sitting is going so to like trigger her to want that stuff all the time. This is so good. We also um, always suggest people, if you're new to keto, stay away from these kind of products. You're trying to really get your mindset, you know, shifted in a different direction. And if you're eating a bunch of sweet things, it is gonna be a lot harder to conquer your sweet tooth. I think that these kind of things are better for people who've been around for a while, they're trying to make this a lifestyle. I am of the belief, and again, it's just our personal opinion, that if these kind of things are not out there, that people will not stay on keto long term. Right. You talk to people all the time and they're like, well, if I just think about the fact that I'm never going to have a cookie again, I'm out. I'm never gonna have a piece of cake again. I would rather you eat something like that so long as the ingredients aren't like horrible ingredients and they're using good things like almond flour and stuff like that. I'd rather you have that than go back to eating the white flour and the regular you know, yeah. corn syrup and the sugar and things like that. But you have to find where does it fit in your lifestyle. So I'm one of those people who thinks they're okay. I hate the word like everything in moderation, but as a treat, as a moderation thing, I do say this. We will have that kind of stuff occasionally. Unless something is sent to us for a review, we don't store it in the house. The only things that we really yeah. store in our house, like as far as treats, is we schoolyard have- Schoolyard snacks. Schoolyard snacks, the cereal, because they're low total carb, low, low calorie, good ingredients. We always have some keto bars. Yeah. And some of the perfect keto bars. And we have some of the cookies. Keto farms. 
Keto Farms and then Keto Brick. Yeah. And that is pretty much it. A if meal we, replacement, though. The meal replacement. Like, it's sweet. But, but if we want, like, a cupcake or something like that, we either have to make it or we have to go buy the mix to do it. We don't store it in the house because if we store it in the house, it's too easy to constantly eat. Well, and I think does... It have to be part of every shopping trip. Right. Do I need to purchase this all the time? So like, I think people can get into the whole thing of like, I buy, you know, meat once a week. Yep. But do we need to buy a treat once a week? Right. Probably not. Yep. Probably that doesn't need to be a part of every grocery store visit. Yep. We got one more comment and that is from Leslie. Hey Leslie, she says, question. I use Senza to track macros, which allows barcode scans for logging food. I've noticed that the information from those barcodes often doesn't match the nutritional information listed on the outside of the container. Is anyone else having this problem and is there any way to fix it other than manually putting them in? Okay, so this is something that we have talked about in the past and it's not just an issue with Senza, it's an issue with a lot of the tracking apps My and not now. just on keto, I mean, but like my fitness pal has this issue. Um, Carb manager has this issue. The, a lot of the tracking ones have this issue. And what it's coming from is a lot of the tracking apps allow you as the consumer, as the user to enter in information manually. So you scan a barcode, you don't like the nutrition information. We'll For example, it. you know, people say you scan something that has you know, allulose, or you scan something that has erythritol, and you're like, well, erythritol should be zero net carbs. Well, erythritol is four total carbs per serving, which is a teaspoon. Yeah. So if something has, for example, four teaspoons of erythritol in there, that would be 16 total carbs, but zero net carbs. Yeah. So what people will do is they'll scan it and then they're going to change the information and now it no longer says it's got 16 total carbs. It just says zero total carbs. But if you're somebody like me. I want to know. Who wants to track that, you're screwed up. So what happens is, is people just keep overwhelming the database and you go scan it and there's like 25 entries for the same product, all with different nutrition information. And could be worse because you could be like us when we first got started, not even understanding this principle. And so when you scan it, you look in the database for the lowest possible one. Oh, this one has 100 total less calories. Let's use that one. It was definitely what I did for heavy whipping cream. So I would be buying Walmart brand heavy whipping cream, but... The Aldi one showed that it was no carbs per serving because someone had manually entered that or maybe the label on that container was zero carbs. And so I'm just using the one that says zero carbs because that's what I want it to say. Right. Whether it says Whether it or not. Whether it's true or not. So we've started using chronometer only because you can also scan it just like you can scan this. It scans a barcode, but they have to have it verified. So right. when someone puts in something, it's not subjective. It is what they have verified the label to be. So I have been the first person to scan a product before. Mm -hmm. And what it says is go ahead and type in manually what you're seeing. Take a picture and then manually put in what you know, you and a lot of says. times you don't even have to manually put it in. When you scan, you're going to scan a picture of the label and then scan a picture of the nutrition. And it and, populates it. And it'll populate it. You may have to edit a couple things. And now that will permanently be in your personal database. It then sends it off to Chronometer. And they verify, and they it. verify it. Like I just got an email yesterday about that, about an item that I put in. It usually takes about a week, sometimes about a week. But once they do it, now again, if you use it tomorrow, it'll show up when you scan it, but it's not available to the general public until right. they verify it. And that's why we always recommend Chronometer. Don't use Chronometer to figure out your macros, just no. use it to track your macros, to track your food. It's free, there's a paid version, but there is a free version where you can have some ads, and that's the one that we highly recommend. Yeah. Just so that you don't sabotage your own journey. Right. Well, that is gonna be this week's Keto on the Couch. We greatly appreciate you guys watching. We really hope you guys all join us for the Redmond Fast starting on Thursday. Now, if you like videos like this, 
down here over there, you're gonna find an entire playlist of all of our previous Keto on the Couches. You can also check out our most recent video by clicking right down here. And whether you wanna see this or you wanna see that, make sure you click down here so you can subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon. That way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week, bye. bye.